straight-paid graduating class of Rocky Graduate wow. University. So joining us today, we have both the class of 2021 and the class of 2020, because we not, did not have a celebration last time. And some of you may see on Zoom, I'm going to shout out to the people on Zoom, we have people from all over the world joining us for the ceremony, uh, many of which are wearing the same uh, outfit that you're wearing uh, today, and they will be having their own uh, hooding ceremony at home, asking whoever to invite to do that. So, and so I want to say thank you for joining us on Zoom. Thank you for joining us here. For uh, you and her family, I know that you never had any doubts that uh, your student would graduate. Now, they had doubts, and the faculty had doubts. <laughs> All of us had doubts, but we know that you never did. And we want to say thank you for being here. Thank you for encouraging them. Thank you for blessing them. And this accomplishment, you don't get to wear the, the funny outfit, but this accomplishment is your, uh, your accomplishment as well. So we want to say thank you. Now, many of them have doctorates and masters, and so the thought would be, in most schools, that now they're smarter and they can tell you what to do, right? Um, and yet, because we have theology in every aspect of our program, whether it be business or whether it be urban studies or direct theology, we find the more you learn about God, the more you're impressed about yourself, or the less you're impressed about yourself. And so the more you learn about God, the more you know you don't know much, okay? <laughs> And so for our doctorates, that increases their ability to listen, to learn, to hear, and to be humble. And this is not a doctorate for privilege. It's a doctorate to use that influence to basically give away that privilege to serve others. And they know that. And they have chosen that, and that's the route that they're taking. So it's a graduation. It's something worth celebrating. But it's a moment of humility, it's a moment of gratitude, it's a moment of thankfulness to God, and thankfulness to all of you that support uh, them to get here. And we're excited you made it. There are some we wondered about, uh, but you made it. And uh, how exciting. And I hope this is just a time that you can just, just hear the voice of God, the delight of God as he's looking at you and just you see the delight in his eyes for what he's accomplished in you and the hard work, the discipline, the many things that you've done to accomplish to be here. Listen to his call and follow him. Let's start with a word of prayer. Our board of directors member, Kimberly Thomas, will come and pray for us. So Kimberly, thank you for being here. Lord, we give you thanks for the graduates gathered here today. Thank you for their families, their friends, their PLCs, professors, and others who so graciously supported them along their journey, which culminates today in this joyous celebration. Lord, as these graduates continue on their journeys, bring to their remembrance that which brought them to BGU in the first place a desire to share Christ in ways that are purposeful and meaningful, and a desire to find ways to improve the lives of others. May they continue to embody BGU's deepest values. May they be etched in their memories for the rest of their lives. And may they be theological innovators and prophetic ministers, social entrepreneurs, and may they be agents of truth and beauty, peace and reconciliation justice and liberation, compassion and global stewardship. And may they use these to help build the kingdom of God and, and create the kind of world that we all want to live in. Lord, I ask you to bless these graduates for their continued commitment and perseverance. May they walk with humility, knowing that even though they may have struggled through, these, through their programs that they have overcome. And as they embark on new endeavors, May each student take what they have learned, build upon it, share it, and apply it in ways that bring glory to you, the Lord Most High. May the shalom of God, peace, harmony, wholeness, prosperity be upon us all. Amen. 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 Good afternoon. 
be reading from the word of the Lord, the book of Hebrews, chapter 12. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily <laughs> ensnares us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. This is the word of the Lord. Hi, everybody. I have the chance to lead the academic programs at Bakke Graduate University, and I know firsthand how much work goes in to really leading two master's programs, and we have graduates of our master's degrees here today, and three doctoral programs. There's so much that goes into student success, and I think all of our graduates online and here in person would agree with that. So I just wanted to take a moment to acknowledge some some people who are a part of the success in the community that we are experiencing today. I want to thank our leadership team at BGU, and in particular, uh, Judy Melton has done a wonderful job with uh, putting this together today. So thank you, Judy, and your team for all of your hard work. Really appreciate it. The academic program directors and faculty who work with our students to move them through the courses and teach them. We have a world-class faculty team. So thank you for all of your hard work that you do. And we appreciate, I know many are joining today as well. I want to thank our board of directors that works so hard to advocate for what we do in the mission here at BGU. We actually have three board members here today. We have Bob Slocum. Kimberly Thomas and Jack Van Hartsfeld. If you could stand up for just for a moment to be recognized and hired. They do such a great job for us. And then BG is kind of a unique place in that we also have a board of regents that represents us from around the world. We have so many students in many different places around the globe. And our board of regents advocates and brings students to us and helps to coach and advise students all the way through their programs. I think we have. Uh, two of our Board of Regents members here today, Rolando Aguirre and Plumni Aviemi. So if, we, if you could uh, just be recognized, I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> to all of our alumni, thank you. We have a very strong alumni group, and they really get behind the work that we do at BGU, and it continues to get stronger. And this group, you will be a part of that. I hope that you will continue to carry the torch of BGU forward. and introduce other leaders and students into our programs. To our partners, I really thank you and appreciate what you do to bring students in. We couldn't do it without our network of partners around the globe who recruit students for us. And then to the family and friends that are here. Many of you are probably either on the personal learning community of our BGU graduates who help to pray for and encourage our students to go all the way through our programs or just walking them through. I know when I went through BGU, I graduated in 2012. My family sacrificed greatly for me to, to earn my degree, and I know that many of you have sacrificed. So I just want to acknowledge you and your hard work and prayer and sacrifice for the, the graduates that we have here today. So graduates, I'm very proud of each and every one of you, and I want to acknowledge you as well. We're going to do that just a bit here. Our commencement speaker today is Dr. Rolando Aguirre. And uh, he lives here in Dallas. He's on the Board of Regents for Dr. Grant University. He's been a friend for a number of years. You'll see in your program a longer introduction. He has been a, really a lifetime of following God and in a unique place, first of all, in the uh, Rio Grande Valley, of uh, creating um, ministries for Spanish speakers and churches and serving thousands of people in that area and bridging between Spanish speaking. Uh, church and English speaking church, uh, as well as two TV programs. One is more of an apologetic and evangelistic program, and one is more of a uh, devotional program. He also has a daily blog and book, uh, Un Minuto uh, con Dios, and it's a minute with God, and uh, really is blessing people with that. He has got an undergraduate from Baptist University of Americas, and two masters, 
uh, in psychology, our uh, uh, professional counseling and human resources from Liberty University. Um, he is serving right now as the uh, uh, as the associate teaching pastor of Park City Baptist, which is a, a very large church in the Dallas area, as well as leading their Spanish speaking ministry. He lives in Dallas, as I said, with his wife Janet, with his wife Janet, Cecilia, Celia, and his son, his daughter Celia, and his son David. And um, been a friend, and I think he'll be encouraged by both his speaking, but just his life of connecting people in places that are often difficult. A lot of we are so happy to be here. Well, what an honor to be here. Um, about five years ago, I was driving eight hours from South Texas uh, with my family that are here, and now I just drove 25 minutes just to come here. So that's awesome. The Bible tells us that the Christian life is pretty much like a race, in particular, a long distance race, not unlike a marathon. The Bible teaches us constantly to run the race with endurance, to finish it well, and with dedication. Preparing for ministry is keeping with the nature of Christian life. Today marks this milestone for all of you graduates here and online all over the world. That's what I love about PGU, who have run the race and we will continue to do so in the days ahead. We just read from the book of Hebrews that the writer of Hebrews encourages his readers in the first century to run with confidence and with confidence and abandonment and endurance to finish the race. His encouragement consists of who can provide them inspiration, how can they run well, and why they can be confident of finishing victoriously. Inspiration. Anytime you undertake something big, you need inspiration. There needs to be an idea or a person that breathes life into you. Inspiration is what fuels you in the race. The writer of Hebrews tells us that we can be inspired by the great cloud of witnesses that surround us. The picture here is of a great multitude of people around us, family, friends, and a community of faith. This crowd encourages and cheers, and over the last, I don't know how many years it took you to complete the degree, but you are not ready today. <laughs> They are not just merely spectators, they are part of the race. There are those who have already run the race and have finished it and have been with you. In particular, in this text, he's talking about the Hall of Fame, men and women of the Bible that we found in Hebrews chapter 11. BGU graduates, a, a diverse family of members, global finest leaders today. They're becoming more transformational because they understand that it's the power of the Holy Spirit that makes them agents of transformation. It makes a huge difference when there is a crowd surrounding you that has already run the race and has finished well. For me, there are many who have made up that cloud of witnesses. I would not have time to mention all of them, but their faces and names are present in my mind. One of them is my mom, who is in heaven since I was 12 years old. A famous painter, Auguste Renoir, drew his famous paintings when he was suffering from excruciating arthritic pain. When one of his friends, Henry Matisse, asked him, why do you continue painting with this severe pain? He replied by saying, because the pain passes, but the beauty remains. The pain passes, but the beauty remains, and that has been the degree for you as well. That was his inspiration. Life is like that, isn't it? Inspiration helps, but also you need endurance. Endurance is what the Bible tells us here. Let us run with perseverance, the race marked for us. The exhortation is to run with endurance, to keep running even when your body feels like giving up. It is not about how fast you run, but how long you last. You all have proven that today, ministry preparation, it is an endurance race. You can read all the books, but there are some other books you must read. You can attend BGU, and, but there are some other seminars you must attend, ongoing training. 
You have done very well in your dissertations. I am very impressed by reading some of the titles. I think you guys are very bright and smart. For a few years, then somebody will come up with an idea, right? But, but you have to continue to write more. You can excel in one area of preparation, but you must take care of all the different facets of ministry preparation, the spiritual, emotional, academic, physical life. One of the most important lessons in ministry preparation is endurance. In ministry, this translates to one word, faithfulness. That's a great character that is needed in life. Anything worth pursuing requires endurance and faithfulness. The good thing about it is that even when we are unfaithful, God remains faithful. Right. Our goal to serve people requires endurance. We have one of the finest groups of global leaders graduating today. We have those involved in the political realm, others in academia, others in nonprofit and for profit organizations, and others in the local church. All of you are ministers in your fears of influence, but it requires endurance. Consider this, during its third year of business, the Coca-Cola company just sold 400 dollars. Basketball superstar Michael Jordan was cut from his basketball high school team. I pray that that coach feels terrible. <laughs> Dr. Seuss, first book entitled Things That I Saw on Mulberry Street, was rejected by 27 publishers. And the 28th publisher, Bangor Press, published his book and sold 6 million copies. In 1902, the poetry editor of the Atlantic Monthly returned the poems of the 28-year-old poet with the following note, quotation. Our magazine has no room for your vigorous verse. The poet's name was Robert Frost. In 1902, the University of Bern turned down a doctoral dissertation for being irrelevant and fanciful. The young physics student writer was Albert Einstein. How can we do that? How can we endure? The text helps us here. Let us throw off everything that hinders and the thing that so easily entangles. Eugene Peterson paraphrases it this way. Do you see what that means? All these pioneers who blazed the way, all these veterans cheering on us. It means that we get better, better on it. A strip down, start running, and never quit. Never quit. Run light. Sporting goods, stores make all kinds of money with athletic clothing that is light, non restrictive, and dry fit. People who run the lightest and most comfortable clothing, they can maximize their energy. In your preparation, there were things that you set aside in order to run and to finish. You cannot carry extra weight. Also focus on the goal. You can run with endurance when you run life, but you need to keep your eyes on the goal. And the text reminds us here, our eyes need to be set on Jesus the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Our eyes must be focused on the goal. Jesus is our example on our goal. We are running toward him. He stands at the end of the race, welcoming us to victory. We must never lose sight of that. Don't let anything distract you. Catch me soon. There are spiritual things against the kingdom of God in our days. We could continue to see the spirit of Pharaoh holding people captive in bondage and in fear. There is the spirit of Goliath that is still mocking and intimidating the children of God. The spirit of Jezebel still makes men and women hide in caves with sexual perversion, manipulation, and extreme depression. The spirit of Absalom is dividing homes, churches, and communities, while the spirit of Herod is killing children through abortion, poverty, malnutrition, human trafficking, murdering dreams, and vision. But I have good news for you today in BGU graduation ceremony. The Spirit of God is more powerful than all those spirits. Yeah. 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 I today empower the church to be light and solve the world yeah. is the Almighty the Spirit of God. Yeah. Therefore, for every Pharaoh, there must be a Moses. For every Goliath, there must be a David. For every Nebuchadnezzar, there must be a Daniel. 
For every Jezebel, there must be an Elijah. For every hero, there must be a Jesus. And for every devil that raises out the kingdom of God, there's a greater God that raises out the Lord. The spirit of the Almighty God. In the race of faith, we have the power of the most almighty living and operating spirit in us. The tunnels. We are not alone. Amen. In a long distance place, it requires inspiration and endurance, but I have to wrap up. If you want to finish well, you also need hope. Okay. In America, you need to have the hope that you will finish. In education, you needed to have the hope of walking across the stage to get your diploma like today. <laughs> In the rest of faith, you need to have the hope that you will cross to finish to the finish line victoriously. In ministry, you need to have the hope that your preparation and your investment will bring healing to people's lives in a way that is meaningful. BGU's preparation has given each of you inspiration, perseverance, but also hope. Let us remember that God designed the race. We see it in our text today. The race marked out for us. We didn't stumble into this race. The race is not a means. God marked out the race for us. God knows the path, the distance, and the difficulty. God didn't put you in the race of faith so you won't finish. You might feel sometimes like giving up, but God will help you to push through and to go to the finish line. Yes, preparation yes, and also be thirsty as you finish your race. Yes, Jesus has won the race for us. Yes, the writer of Hebrews tells us that Jesus is the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Yes, we are invited to spend our eyes on Jesus. He is the supreme example. Yes, Jesus is the supreme champion. He ran the race. And he won the race. We can have hope because Jesus finished the race and he finished well. The Bible tells us that there is one who is a pioneer and perfected the race of faith. His name is Jesus, Yeshua Hamasir. He's not only the one that won the race, but he made it what it is. Yeah. He invented it, he conquered it through the cross. Yes. No other symbol incorporates passion and promise like the cross. Jesus said, carry your own cross daily and follow me. Yeah. The cross is both vertical and horizontal. Vertically, we stay connected to God, his kingdom, eternal life, a spiritual truth with divine principles and glory. Horizontally, to our left and to our right, we exist surrounded and we move through our community, our relationships, family, culture, and society. Simply stated, the cross is both vertical and horizontal. <laughs> It is both redemption and relationship. It is both covenant and community. It is both kingdom and society. It is righteousness and justice. It is salvation and transformation. It is interest and its practice. It is John 3 16 and it is Matthew 25. It is Billy Graham and it is Martin Luther King Jr. It is faith and public service. It is prayer and activism. It is sanctification and it is also service. It is the kingdom of God in Dallas, Texas, and around the world through the agents of transformation that we can use. Is that ready today? Jesus is more than an example to fire. He's more than an example to imitate. He has won the race for us. He is our hope. He is our strength. It is through the power of the Holy Spirit that we can be empowered to finish the race. In 1952, Edmund Hillary tried to climb Mount Everest and he fell just before reaching the mountain top. A few weeks later, he was speaking at a event. He stood at the edge and he said it all out, pointing at that picture. He said this way, Mount Everest, you beat me the first time, but you will not beat me the second time. For you have already grown all you are having to grow, but I'm still growing. Yeah. We are still growing. Yeah. A year later, May 29, 1953. Edmund Hillary was the first one to reach the mountain top of Mount Everest. You will graduate today, but you're still growing. You have completed an important leg, important leg of your race. You will graduate today, and we congratulate you for that. 
We are thankful to God for allowing you to reach this goal. As you move forward, you are reminded that you need to continue to run this race with faith and service with perseverance and patience, but you are not alone. Yeah. There is a great cloud of witnesses that have already run the race. Yes, sir. Jesus is the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Yeah. And we have the Holy Spirit to help us in the race. Yeah. Let us pray. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, your will, nothing else, nothing else, but your will in our minds. That's our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. As the registrar of Rocky Graduate University, I present to the president, the directors, board of regents, academic dean, and faculty, the candidates for the 2020 and 2021 graduating classes. For the 2020 grad candidates, please rise and come forward. The candidate for the degree of Master of Business Administration is Joy Kim in extension. Father in heaven, we lift joy to you and pray for her work as office manager at Erickson Senior Living with senior living facilities across the United States. We ask for an anointing on her project to bring alignment and efficiency to the organization through the research she conducted during her capstone project. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. We ask that you follow each one of the prayers with, in your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer, and we join you on the front line. The candidate for the degree of Master of Arts in Transformational Leadership is uh, Jackie Cook Floyd, who is also receiving her doctorate. So um, she is choosing to get that degree today, and uh, she's already gotten her diploma for the master's degree. So she graduated with her master's last year and her doctorate this year. Wow. <laughs> Uh, Mark Beauchamp is also in extension. Um, Lord God, we lift Mark to you and pray for his work in the North Balkans as a Foursquare missionary there, working under the leadership of Foursquare Europe. Give him wisdom to bring unity, trust, and cooperation between churches and leaders to honor your kingdom. Bless his work on the national board of Foursquare Austria leader and as mentor and coach and to network the larger body of Christ in Austria. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. The candidates for the degree of Doctor of Ministry are Natam Lezen in extension. As Natam works to create economic shalom by engaging the church in justice-based efforts in Myanmar, Lord, we pray your continued blessing on this important work. Open the hearts of the church leaders to overcome the lack of awareness of social affairs, fear, and indifference. In your mercy, Lord, hear yeah. our prayer. Kenneth Jerome
mercy, Lord. Hear our prayer. Tina Jackson Brown, in abstention. TJ has asked for continued divine healing and the complete restoration of her brain and body damaged by her recent stroke. We also ask, Lord God, for the Holy Spirit's divine guidance and wisdom as she writes her first book, The Art of Strategic Womanhood, that this, will work, this work will transform the lives of women globally. In your mercy, Lord, hear yeah. our prayer. Yetahun Kadidi Bantir in abstention. Lord, we lift Getu to you and pray that you will continue to bless his efforts to assist small enterprises and microfinance institutions in applying the transformational leadership perspectives of reflection and a servant heart in a way that will expand their growth in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, and beyond. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Getahun Kadidi, I'm sorry, just that. Thank you for your work, Cephas, has accomplished in DR Congo to provide transformational education from a scarcity culture toward enduring holistic peace and development. We pray a continued blessing as he expands the transformational education for abundance culture model. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Kent Anthony Blair. Father, Anthony seeks wisdom and an opportunity to utilize the knowledge he gained from this degree at his work and service to the firm and its clients, and in the search to increase its ministry. Bless his efforts to transition the knowledge gained from his dissertation research to facilitate effective pilot projects for local churches that would support future opportunities. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray that you will continue to bless these efforts to utilize the story-based framework to communicate the principles of theology of work as an effective means of disseminating the gospel. We also pray the book, Planting Mangoes in the Church, will prove to be an effective tool in Ethiopia and beyond. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayers. Father, Joe desires to be an authentic leader who is characterized by integrity, forward-looking, inspiration, and all-around confidence. He asks that more donors will be opened in order to grow and develop servant leaders both in the church and in the marketplace. In your mercy, Lord. Arisa thanks you, Lord, for the ministry of Hope International in serving the poor and underserved. We pray for the work at his church, St. Etienne Cathedral, Anglican Church of Rwanda, and for your provision to refurbish the sanctuary's leaky roof. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, grace Ryan with wisdom, guidance, and patience to understand how to connect and apply the knowledge he gained in pursuit of his doctorate to his ministry and in life. Bless his efforts to communicate to others the profitable principle of the symbiotic relationship 
that can be achieved between companies and their customers. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. In extension. We pray, Lord, that you will continue to bless Vita as she seeks to utilize asset-based community development and transformational leadership tools to strengthen community engagement in Guyana. Expand her efforts to see transformation in these communities. In your mercy, Lord, hear yeah. our prayer. Stephen Thompson. Lord, we lift regard to you and pray that you will grant him grace to implement what he learned through his degree for transforming his ministry community and to serve his people with humility and the fullness of the Holy Spirit. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Brian Gregory Westfield. Father in heaven, please bless Brian's efforts to introduce the servant leadership principle into the United States Army's leadership model to assist the Army's future leaders. Thank you for what you have already accomplished through him while he served his country faithfully for 30 years and what you will accomplish through him in this new ministry effort. We give you the glory for his completion of this project and ask that you continue to allow him to move his project forward in such a way that will be pleasing in your eyes. In your mercy, Lord, hear yeah. our prayer. Yeah. Any candidates for the 2021 class, please rise and come forward. Candidates for the degree of Executive Master of Business Administration on the new Elizabeth Leary in extension. Lord, we lift Monique, her family, and especially for the Bahamas, which is still recovering from not only devastating hurricanes, but trying to survive the pandemic after them. Many have lost loved ones, their homes, and their incomes. Their nation's youth now struggle to visualize a realistic future as many doors have been closed over the past two years. Cover this country as they enter into yet another hurricane season. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Lori A. Miller, in extension. 
Father, we pray that Lori will be an effective, transforming leader in her spheres of influence in Arlington, Texas. Lead and guide her in all that you have called her to do. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. The candidates for the degree of Master of Arts in Transformation Leadership are Rosette Ladies Frazier in Abstention. Tomorrow, Lizette's team will be launching Hillsong Atlanta, a new church in the heart of the city. We pray for your presence and favor and we launch a new global church in hopes of bringing hope and restoration, specifically in the area of racial reconciliation. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Faith, Maria, most welcome in extension. Lord, we ask that faith may continue to join you in what you're doing and restoring the lives of the poor and vulnerable, and that all she does will bring your glory. She has based her life on the promise in Isaiah 58, 10. If you pour yourself out for the hungry and satisfy the desire of the afflicted, then shall your light rise in the darkness and your gloom be as the noonday. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Anna, Marie, and Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 transformational leader and as I work to lead a kingdom movement of missional disciple makers in the Boise Valley, that I will have discerning ears to hear what the Lord is saying and the boldness and grace to do what God asks me to do, that I will be the wife and mother my family needs me to be, and your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, we lift up Margo's country, the Bahamas. We pray specifically for the elections, righteousness and wisdom in governance, economic strategies for local investors, and for young Bahamians to become nation builders. We pray that you will honor marriage and building families according to the will of God. Margo plans to partner with churches, social enterprises, schools, and other government <coughs> agencies to introduce young people to serve in leadership and stewardship for community transformation. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. The candidate for the degree of Doctor of Ministry is Matthew Miller. Father, we lift Matthew to you and ask for his ministry, the Faroga Valley Academy, and disciple making movements in East Africa, which focuses on raising up inside leaders in order to see holistic transformation and the healthy development and maturation of movements within Africa. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Candidates for the degree of Doctor of Transformational Leadership are 
Felicia Keishan Ng in absentia. Commission Felicia to be thoroughly led and used by you for your kingdom purposes, both in Malaysia and New Jersey. Move her to the people and organizations who are ready to be transformed so that she is able to make an impact in their labor wherever there is a need. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Claudia Millicent Schreiber. <laughs> We pray for your blessing and provision as Claudia's ministry considers expanding their church ministry with the trade school. Grant her provision and direction to start a ministry in high schools in her city. She also seeks health and protection for her and her husband in smooth national elections in Haiti. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Father God, we lift Jackie to you today and ask your blessing on the projects in her homeland of Jamaica that you put on her heart. We pray for your ever-present blessings and continued guiding hand on her family, church, friends, colleagues, the BGU family, and her country, Jamaica, and our world. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. ministry of planting multiracial churches in the suburbs of Ohio as he enters into the role of bishop. We also lift up his family as he takes this next step. Grant him the continual guidance of the Holy Spirit that your plans will be manifested for your glory. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, we lift Matthew to you and pray for your guidance as he works to provide community leaders, community developers, and educators with the impact of arts and technology programming on youth from the south side of East Bay. In your mercy, Lord. Your Lord. Father, bless.
Thus, Barry to use his dissertation as a tool that inspires Tatars of Romania to recover a vital part of their identity by preserving their heritage language. As he works alongside them, may God's spirit access their hearts to the heritage of the living word. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we lift Seglin Peter to you this day in his work with the youth in Joe City, Nigeria, to bring entrepreneurship to the education system, practical experiences, and a support system to boost young people's confidence in venturing into establishing businesses. Bless his enterprise, Impact Academy, to accomplish your goals through him and his work. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we lift Zerahim to you and ask for guidance as he plans to initiate youth and women leadership and entrepreneurship development in Ethiopia. The project will require human and financial resources for this important ministry to be launched. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Noah and God and we can. Lord, Noah seeks your hand in the work you have revealed to him to equip particularly young African Americans to be all they can be to you. We pray a special blessing on his project called Light the Way. In your mercy, Lord, hear our Kofi seeks your wisdom, Lord, as he serves you through the Ose Kusi Foundation, a youth focused foundation that provides scholarship to vulnerable youth in Africa, and the Pan African Leadership Institute, a leadership institute that develops holistic entrepreneurial leaders for Africa. His cry is that you use him locally and internationally as your servant in any way that brings you glory and honor. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Mother, stand on the
young family greater vision and insight as to developing her a school and a community center for your glory. In your mercy, Lord. as a national leader training and equipping leader. Her work in Brazil with vulnerable communities and the resources to maintain her project Hope, a house for single mothers in vulnerable situations. We also pray for the pastors and leaders of churches in Brazil. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. of 2020 and 2021, I give this final charge. I charge you to walk and live a life worthy of the vocation and calling that this degree will afford you and the opportunities to serve. 
today you have joined an elite group of believers who have made the sacrifice to earn credentials that will highlight your learning and knowledge and identify you as a field expert. With this charge comes a responsibility for whom much is given, much is required. I charge you to understand that the awarding of your degree at this date and time in our history is not coincidental. You have been given the foundation upon which to build the God-ordained answers to our world's problems. I charge you not to focus on how big those problems are, but to focus on how big your God is yeah. and that he has called and equipped you for this specific journey. Start with the truth that Abraham and Sarah learned in Genesis 18 and 14 is anything too hard for God. I charge you to represent not only your academic achievement, for you have not only earned an advanced degree, you have earned an advanced degree based on and rooted in a Christian worldview. Wherever this credential will take you, I charge you to represent and live out the two commandments that Christ identified when he was asked which of the Ten Commandments were the greatest. That is, to love God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, all of your strength, and your neighbor as yourself. If we can just do these two things, the world problems will pale in comparison to what God will do through you and his church. According to Ephesians 2 and 10, you are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for you to do. Now I invite everyone else to stand.